Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. If this is your first time here, you're welcome. Please click the subscribe button so you're part of my family. You guys, today I'm going to show you how to make the simplest, most delicious stew ever. When I was in uni, people knew me as the stew babe, like my stew was always on point. And I have different ways of making it. Today I'm going to show you the easiest few ingredients only for this stew. For this recipe, I'm using goat meat because goat meat is perfect, like so perfect for it and that is where you can taste the flavor from. So I'm just seasoning it with salt, beef seasoning and onions. That's all we need to season this goat meat and then to put it on fire. This is male goat meat. Do you guys know there's a difference between male goat meat and female goat meat? Female goat meat takes hours to cook. You can taste the stubbornness in the goat meat. <laughs> but male goat meat is tender, is softer. So next time you go to the market, ask your butcher for male goat meat. They are juicier, <laughs> tender and more delicious than the female goat meat. And I know that the male goat meat tends to smell more like goat goat. But I mean, what is a goat meat based dish without the smell of goat meat? I love it. Tell me, do you like the smell of goat meat or you really, really cannot stand it? While the meat is cooking, we are going to blend our stew base, which is made up of tomatoes, pepper and lots of onions. You guys, onions will make a difference in your stew. It makes your stew very sweet. There are different types of onions and they give different taste. I like to use this one, but if you use the, I think the white onions, it makes your food so sweet, almost like you added sugar to the soup or to the stew. So this one, I like to use this one. If I want the stew to be very sweet, like sugar sweet, I add white onions. So this is all we're going to use. No tatashe, no nothing. Just tomatoes, pepper, onions, blend it together. A lot of onions. If you notice, I like to chop my tomatoes into smaller bits before blending, not just to make the blending easy, but you guys, I like to see what's inside my tomatoes. There was a time I opened some tomatoes and it had maggots inside, like the maggots were already growing. Sometimes if you open some tomatoes, it's getting bad. So this is the reason I always cut my tomato in cubes, just so I can see what's going on inside. This is also the reason why I don't blend my tomatoes outside. I know when we go to the market, we have um, what they call it, those people that blend your tomatoes in bulk in the market. I'd rather come home and blend tomatoes for five hours than to do that outside because first of all, I feel like they don't wash the tomatoes well and you know tomatoes and all the more than everybody has, you know, touched it and everything and they don't now wash it well and they don't now open the tomatoes to see if they are maggots. You guys, that maggot traumatized me. <laughs> I will not lie, I've seen it more than three times when I'm cutting open tomatoes, like I just cut it open and I see worms. So it has really traumatized me and since then I blend my tomatoes myself, I wash it myself, I open it to see everything that's inside. Moving on from worms and tomatoes, that's not why we're here. We're here for delicious stew. So I will transfer the blended tomato to a pot. This is my boiling tomato pot, the pot I always use to boil tomatoes. If you watch my videos for years, you will know. And I boil it till the water reduces. So this helps with the cooking process. While the tomato is boiling, I'm frying my goat meat. So, I'm doing this for two reasons. You can actually bake the goat meat in the oven, but I just really want a lot of flavor. And this stew will not be the same if you don't fry it. And if you don't fry it with the oil you use to fry the goat meat, do you understand? So it's a building flavor thing we're doing here. So I'm just transferring the amount of goat meat I want to use and frying it. So for fit farm people, I know they are always like, don't fry your stew with oil. You can grill the goat meat. Like I said, you can actually grill it and it will taste great. Uh, reduce your oil, reduce this, don't eat this, don't eat that. I feel like sometimes it's not about what we are eating, but how we are eating it. 
So for example, let's say a bowl of delicious jollof rice. If you consume a whole bowl of rice three times daily, you're going to have a problem. But if you have small portions of rice a few days a week, I don't think you're going to have much of a problem. Just let me know. That's the way I look at it. I don't believe in cutting things off and I'm really big on flavors and I always use the method I can use to achieve the flavor I'm trying to achieve. So it's hard for me to just cut off some certain things when it comes to food firmness and all of that. So this is kind of like my mindset. I'm just giving you guys that information so that you get to know me better and the way I like my food. So now that we have fried the meat, I'm going to use a wide pan to make the stew. So I'm transferring the oil from the fry pan to this wide pan. Why I like the wide pan is because it can fry the stew better, quicker. If you use a deep pot, the stew will boil instead of frying, do you get? <laughs> so I try to use a wide, sometimes I use a stainless steel pan. And I like stainless steels because they fry like really, really fast. But this pan is wider um, than my stainless steel, so I'm using this one today. So we're going to add the onion. Now that the onion is added, we'll just allow it fry for a bit. See, I told you this is a simple recipe. You don't need a lot of ingredients. And then we're adding our tomatoes to the oil that's already frying with the onion and just add everything and mix together. The aroma of this stew reminds me of one mama put that used to live close to our house <laughs> when I was younger. <laughs> the aroma of this stew reminds me so much of her. If you want to destroy everybody in your neighborhood while you're cooking this stew, just add curry to it at this point, like at the point where you're frying the um, onions, add curry powder. Oh my gosh, everybody will be destroyed. They will be looking for your house. But even just like this, as simple as this is, the aroma is just amazing. Like all over my house, just it smells to you. You know that sweet, delicious, sweet taste this to you. That's what we are trying to achieve with minimal ingredients. From the beginning of making the stew, I add the fried goat meat. That's because I want the stew to penetrate the goat meat. And I want the goat meat to what? To penetrate the stew. This is a marriage. This particular stew, I've made it three times in one week. And that's because I made it on, I think on Monday, and I just made a very small portion. And everybody was like, we want more. Even my baby was licking her mouth. So I had to make it the next day and then today I had to make a big batch just to please everybody. And that's how good this stew is. So now I'm adding some salt. I'm also going to add a bit of beef seasoning and then that is it really. No curry, no thyme, no nothing. And then we're going to add some of the beef stock. Oh, one more ingredient is white pepper. You can skip it, but I kind of like the flavor I get when I add white pepper to my cooking, especially when it's like stew, jollof, anything that has tomatoes inside. I like to add white pepper to it because I, get, I think it gives off a really, really nice flavor. Cooking stew for me is like being in a relationship or in a marriage. You have to pay attention to it. You can't leave your stew and go and be watching a movie. It will burn. And once your stew burns, the flavor is destroyed. What you are trying to get has gone. So I'm always standing by when I'm making stew. It is always a labor of love. I'm standing by and I'm turning it around, letting it fry, turning it around every like two, two minutes for almost 30 minutes. Sometimes it takes that long for your stew to get cooked. And when it is cooked, 
and when you taste it and it is delicious you will know that all the work was worth it I hope you guys try this recipe I know you are going to like it so just give it a go minimal ingredients that you probably already have in your kitchen if you're watching and you're not subscribed what are you doing uh -uh, click the subscribe button become part of my family I always share recipes every week is the way you make your stew different from mine leave it in the comment section and when you do try this recipe I would like to get your feedback I'll see you guys in my next video bye